if you've been struggling to get your shot off against your defender, or if you just want a quicker shot, quicker release off the dribble, I have the perfect workout for y'all. So we're working on quick pickups. First workout between the legs. You have five with your right hand, five with your left. You're trying to put the ball through your legs as quick as you can. Set your feet, get your hands placed, and then shoot the ball. Five makes, right and left. Um, the reason why we want to do quick pickups is like I was just saying, um, if somebody's guarding you, after you make a move, if you don't have good feet and you can't set your feet to get that shot up and be balanced, either the defender's probably going to strip you, they're going to get there before you can shoot, or they're already going to be there on the contest while you're trying to shoot the ball, and that'll equal a bad shot. Once you make your five on the right, you'll go to the left. Same thing. Between the legs, as quick as you can, set, shot. Making five. It's really important to work on your hands also. So after you get your feet right, you want to drop those feet quick, explode up to shoot it. But while you're doing that, you also have to worry about your hand placement, getting it into your shooting pocket and then quickly being able to release that ball after the move. After you make your five on both sides, next is behind the back. Same concept, go behind the back as quick as you can. It's just one dribble. You're stationary, behind the back, pull up. We're trying to get our feet set right after the move and get into our jump shot with a quick release so we want that quick release after the move trying to be very fluent make it look smooth sometimes you might lose the ball have to regather with your hands and your feet but for the most part you want it to be smooth just like that See how I have to take a little pause to get it. I'm a little off balance, but I still make the shot. Landing on one, one foot really isn't good. You want to land on two feet so you know you're squared up in balance. Sometimes I do that because I'm not set. But you want to land on two feet. That's how you know you're balanced. If you mess up, just reset. One behind the back, shot. This is a great way to work on your shot quickly and then work on shooting the same shot in the same spot, keeping that same form, being consistent with your shot. So next one is crossover. You got a quick crossover, kind of step it out with that foot, set your feet, shot. So when you hit somebody with a move, you want to be able to pull up. If, if their hand isn't up, if you create a little bit of space, boom, you pull up. Right after you create that space, you pull up. That's your time to make that shot. Because once they recover and contest the shot isn't a good shot, you might get blocked. They might strip it. Like I was saying earlier, you might have to pass it out. So you got to be able to quickly release that shot after you make a great move. After you make five, you'll take it to the opposite side. We'll take a little step, set your feet, shot. Try to stay squared up. You'll see it in the NBA a lot, college, even high school. Um, some people, whenever they're coming down the court, they might size you up, make one good move, boom, they're pulling it up. The defender isn't even ready. So they have that quick release, their, their feet are set, and they're ready to shoot the ball. Because on offense, I mean, you know what you're going to do. The defender doesn't know what, what you're going to do. When you come down the court, and, you know, you're also going off reaction, but you kind of know where you want to get to, you know what you want to do. So once you get that space, you got to be able to shoot it quickly. So this is helping you work on that quick release.
And you're also getting the work out on your handle. You see how I messed up? Getting the work on your handle, footwork, getting in shape. Once you start feeling it, kind of getting that rhythm. See, I got into a little rhythm right there. Then take it to the opposite side. Same thing. Working on footwork, working on our handle, working on our jump shot, our balance, all of that. It took me 15 minutes to do this whole workout. It's a little shorter with me um, fast forwarding it, but 15 minutes total to make all these shots. We're doing between the legs, behind the back crossover, and then you have a double between, double behind the back, and a double crossover, five each side. For the most part, you don't want to miss two in a row. If you miss two in a row, you want to make the next one. You don't want to miss more than two in a row. You want to try to find out how to lock in that shot. If you miss one, you make the next one. If you miss, if you miss two, you make the next one. Try not to miss three in a row. So now in the league, everywhere, when you see basketball players, um, a lot of people are able to do both nowadays. There used to be, you know, some people that are just catching shoes. Some people are more of the ball handler. But now even our centers are being able to handle the ball. I mean, Wimby for the Spurs, 7'5", being able to handle the ball, dribble pull-ups, catch and shoot at 7'5". So if you're a guard, you definitely have to be able to – catch the ball and shoot so catch and shoot is very important being stationary and just catching it feet set shooting the ball quickly but if you're a guard and you're handling the ball or you're on the wing if you're coming down the key you have to be able to have some type of way of getting your shot up if you can't get to the rack or if you create some space you should be able to get a little nice mid-range shot, or be able to shoot three off the dribble. So this is just working on your touch around the mid-range. You could also do this uh, workout back on the three-point line. And just remember, these drills are to get you better. So even if this isn't something you do, like you don't even dribble – and shoot the ball at all in games. This is something you should work on outside of practice by yourself to enhance your individual game. So then when you are in practice, you can start practicing it against your teammates to sharpen it against competition. So that's the first step. You work on these things by yourself or with your trainer or with some teammates individually. And then when you get into practice, you start implementing it into your game against competition and practice. So you kind of get a feel for it in a game-like situation. And then when you have it down in practice, your coaches, your confidence, all that will be up. Now you can start doing it in games. So just remember, you don't want to, just hop straight into it and start doing stuff like this in games. You want to practice it, sharpen your skill. That's why I'm throwing these videos out. These are things you could throw into your workout, go to the park, go outside at the home hoop, or get in the gym at your school and work on your game. So then you can do these type of things in the game. That's what NBA players did all their life. They worked on these things. They sharpened it. And then they implemented it into their game whenever they were at that level. So just remember, work on your game. Throw these workouts into your practice routine or your workout regimen so then you can enhance your skill and use these things in games. So then you can go play college ball, maybe go play pro ball, whatever you aspire to do.